Hey everybody, today we're continuing our backup journey and I'm going to be focusing specifically on how to backup your Docker containers using Restic. Now, if you haven't seen my existing video on my whole backup strategy, go and have a look at that. It will give you the whole overview of what I do in terms of backing up both Docker containers, any data that's on my network, NAS drives, my Kubernetes cluster, all of that. And it implements that 3 2 1 backup strategy. But anyway, let's get back on topic. Today, I'm going to show you how to deploy Restic within Docker as a container itself. I'm going to show you how you can back up all of your containers with a simple volume mount. And I'm also going to show you how to restore those containers should anything happen to them. So let's dive straight in. One of the first things you'll notice is that my Restic Docker Compose file is actually made up of three separate containers. Now, you don't have to run it as three, you can just use it as one, but I recommend you use all three because the Restic container creates the backups, the prune will remove the old backups that don't fit the specified backup schedule, I'll get onto that, and then the check does exactly what it says. It checks that you have the right number of backups as specified by your specification. So let's go over what I mean here. So when you create your Restic container, you will specify how frequently you want to back up and you'll specify how many backups you want to keep. The prune will make sure that nothing exceeds that, i.e. we don't want to fill up our hard drives with meaningless backups. So anything that doesn't fit that, we may have specified seven days, that means the eighth day will get pruned. The check will go through and make sure that we have the right number of backups. If we don't, it will do an ad hoc backup to make sure that it hits that frequency. So looking at the Docker Compose file, most of the changes that we're going to need to make are actually in the Restic container. So the first variable you want to specify is probably that startup. So do you want to run a scan when you start this container? I've got it set to start. That means when you start this container, it's going to perform a backup. That might be good if you want to do a quick ad hoc scan. You just simply reboot that Restic container and you know that you're going to get a backup. But if you don't want that behavior, just set it to false. The next part is where you specify your backup frequency. So in this example, I run it twice a day, so every 12 hours. Now that might sound extreme, but because it uses differential backups, i.e. it only changes the files that have changed since the last backup, which is great. The other important areas to look at in this config are the mounts. And you'll see that there are three mounts. So the first folder location is where you want your backups to be stored. Now in this instance, you can see that I'm storing them on my TrueNAS server. Now that's handy for me because my TrueNAS server has redundancy built in with a couple of VDEBs, etc. But you can store this wherever you want. You could store it locally if you wanted, but it doesn't necessarily make a great deal of sense if you've already got that data available within the container. But it would make it easier to copy and paste that from that location. So you choose where you want to put it, but it does make sense to store that somewhere else as opposed to the virtual machine or Docker environment you're running in. The second folder here is where I specify my restore location. So we'll get onto that later, but there's a separate command that you need to run when you want to restore your backups. And what it actually does is it goes through, looks at all your backups, and as I mentioned, they're incremental backups. So you couldn't just take one and have a complete file set. So what it will do is go back through all of your backups through those incremental updates and recreate an entire backup that it will store in that folder location that's specified there. And the final folder is effectively what you want it to back up. So typically you could put here your Docker volume location, or if you're doing folder mounts like I've been doing, you would specify that location. So in a nutshell, just specify where the data is that you want Restic to back up. The second one is the prune. The options are pretty straightforward here. We simply specify again how often we want it to run the prune command. So how often do we want it to check that it has the right number of backups, i.e. nothing's exceeding the limits we specified within the Restic container. You're going to want to specify a password in here, and this will be the same encryption password that's specified in the Restic container. And finally, we've got the check container, which again, 
you're going to want to specify how often you want to check and in order for it to do the checks you're going to have to specify that encryption password otherwise it can't read the data it's pretty straightforward so let's go ahead and I'll show you how to deploy that container and I'll also show you the logs to make sure that it's actually running the backup and we can also hopefully see when it's done the backup those folders created within the location we specified where we want our backups to be stored okay so let's head on over to the install so on my docker host I've copied the config file I have put that into my docker compose folder just place it wherever you need to I've made sure that I've added my password I have put some tags on my backup you can do this for each of the backups that you want to run in case you're running different backups or different programs I've added the same password to my prune image and equally I've added it to the check image so make sure those are all the same I've also put on the screen a list of all the containers that I'm running in Portainer just so you can have an idea of what it's going to back up when we run this container so you want to head back to the terminal and type in your standard sudo docker compose up dash d and hit return that's going to go away and pull the image once it's pulled that image it's then going to run it and now as we specified in our docker compose file we want it to run a backup when it starts so that's exactly what it's going to do so let's hop into portainer and let's check the logs for the container so in here we can see that it successfully ran and we can see that it's created a snapshot which is another word for a backup actually a snapshot makes a bit more sense because as I said these are incremental backups you can see that 292 megabytes were written for this and if you ran another backup it should only be a few megabytes at most because it's only going to back up those that have changed since we last did this backup this will populate over time so let's go and check that that actually worked by heading to the location we specified for the backups and as you can see all of those files are backed up in that folder So now let's go and do a restore. So to do a restore, we need to find the ID of the backup we want to choose. So that's as simple as running the command within the putty, within the command line in putty, or you can just head into the Docker container via portainer and run the same command. So let's do a system restore. Let's imagine that the data was corrupted or we lost it or we're restoring on a new system. Simply type in exec restig restig restore specify the target that's where you want it to restore that's the temp for restore in my um, in my config but you can choose wherever you want and then we specify the id once that's run go to that folder and as you can see on screen all of my containers data are handily stored there and to restore that all you would need to do is shut down your container copy the data across and then spin up your container and it should be as if nothing has happened and that's it you now have everything you need to securely and efficiently back up your Docker containers and restore them when you need to. Please remember to like and subscribe this video if you found it useful. On the next video, we'll be looking at Arclone and how you can securely store this data online in the cloud as part of that 321 backup strategy. See you on the next one.